Hey guys and welcome to the Hackinons YouTube channel. We will be seeing the part 4 of how to upload an image using a Python script. In the previous part, we basically processed an image, stored it in a simple directory and mapped it to a URL using a Python file that is from the Flask library and we simply displayed that image on our front end. But in this video, we will see another method of processing image that is sending it as a base64 type of file format in the front end. So without further wasting time, let's get started. So basically a small recap from the previous video. What we did is we basically made a simple website which will allow us to upload a file. So for example, in this case, a normal JPG file. And when we click submit, using the Python script, we will process the image and display it back again on the website. Now we will use this using the base64 method. So basically in this code that we created, some parts of the code are obviously going to be the same, but we'll have to make small changes while we are processing it back to the front end. And we will see how to do that. So the first thing that we'll have to do is import some set of libraries that we'll be working with. So basically first thing we'll be working with a pillow library that is used for working with any type of images etc in python so we will be handling it using the pillow library and the image will be processed then using the base64 library so we'll say import base64 and we'll also be importing io now what we'll have to do is we do not need this function of display because everything will be wrapped in this one upload image function so let me just comment this line of code and what we will have to do is after all this is done basically we are going to do the saving all as a previous videos method only the processing and displaying on the front end app will be a bit different so after that is done now we will add some additional code so basically first I will create img image is equal to image that is the function from the pillow library and I am going to open it so I will use image.open Basically, it will simply help us to open any image. And now what I want to open is the folder location in which the image is present. So basically, this is the exact location of the folder. So I'll say open from app.config upload images. Okay, so let me just copy down this line of code, copy it, paste it right down over here. And then I'll just add the slash between them as well as the file name and the file name is simply going to come from this variable okay and that's done so now we have the image present inside this variable saved now what we'll have to do is we'll have to create some type of data encryption so i'll say data is equal to io dot bytes okay so basically this is just a method of initializing it bought by its io okay after that is done now we'll have to save the image so i'll say image dot save as the name is data that is the io bytes format and then the file type so it will be a jpeg so i'm saving it as a jpeg and now i'm going to create some encoded image data so i'll say create a variable called as encode image underscore data is equal to base64 that is the method that we'll be employing for this video and then I'll use a function called as b64 encode. So this will basically encode the file format. And what will be that? From the data dot get value. So basically we're getting the value of the data that is present. And that data is coming from this line. That's the line 32. Well, this looks all good and fine. Now we'll have to make some changes in our HTML file, this HTML file, as well as while we are rendering the template. Okay. So what we're doing is previously while we were rendering the template, we were simply sending it as a file name, but now we have to send it in the form of the base encoded image, right? So what I'll do is instead of this variable called as file name is equal to file name, I'm going to rub off this line of code. And what I'll have to do is I'll have to create the encoded image data. So I'm going to send that the encoded image data, which we created right over here on the line 35. So I'm going to say encoded dot image data and then I'm going to decode it. Basically, whenever you're uploading anything, you need to decode it after encoding it. And this usual 
parameter that is UTF-8, which is usually supported for the front end. And that's pretty much how it's going to work. Also in the HTML file, we'll have to make few changes. Like as you can see in this line five, everything is perfect. Line five to nine, nine, we are creating a if condition. If the file name exists, then we will show this div tag. Otherwise we'll not be showing it. But here in the SRC, again, we are not going to directly upload the image from the relative folder. Well, we will be using the encoded method that we employed. So for that, I'll have to again make some small changes in the HTML file. What I'll have to say is source data will point to image slash the JPEG format. And then in the semicolon, what I'm going to say is it's going to be a base 64 type of method. And finally, I'm going to use my Jinja templates to basically give the variable name. Okay. So, and the variable name in our case is file name. So basically we are saying that the source file will be a data of an image, which is a JPEG and its encoding method that the format is base64 and finally the file name. So this looks pretty good over here. And if we check all these lines of code, everything is fine right over here. And you should see that you have just uh, commented this code that we used from the previous video. And that's it. Let's rerun the server right over again. And as you can see, now it's perfectly running. And also before that, let's just delete this image to ensure that we are uploading the image right over again. So let me just run the server again. There are no syntax errors. The server is running perfectly. That's great. So let me copy the server link, copy that, go back to the website, paste it here and the slash home route, which will take me back to the main website. And it's saying select a file to upload. So I'll just upload the common image that I've been uploading and submit. Okay, it says name error, I am is not defined. So let's see what's the issue. Okay, so I, instead of saying image.save, I did I am.save. So that's, that happens while we are writing code. So you can just rerun the server right over again. Wonderful. And uh, again, the image was saved right over again. So let me delete it. Run the server again. And let me just type in home again. Now it's taken me back to the main first portion of the website and let me just upload the image, submit and wonderful. So basically what we did is we up obtained the image and while resending it back to the front end, we up so did that using the base 64 method. And this provides a key and advantage of security. So once again, let's recheck what we did all over again. So let me just remove this output window. So all this portion was the same. Just we imported the required libraries. One is pillow to upload the image, then base 64, that is the encoding method, as well as IO that is to specify the data type. And other than that, we, this all code till here, that is the saving of the image from us from the previous video. And then what we did is we basically opened the image using the pillow library. And we again saved it in that data encrypted method that is from bytes IO function. Then we created an encode image data using the base 64 library. And finally we uploaded it by decoding it to the HTML that is the front end site of our web browser. And then in the HTML website, we again changed the SRC to point to an image of JPEG, which is of the base 64 method. And finally the file name was provided. So back again to the flowchart. Let's see what we did in the part three as well as part four. We basically created a simple front end that's a HTML. And through that we uploaded the image and then that image was sent to the Python file that is app.py. And this app.py made use of the flash library. And in one method, we directly mapped the URL to the front end from the files location. And in the second method, we send the image as a base 64 format to the front end, which improves the security of the app. So that's it from these two videos from the part three and part four. I hope you like this video. If you have any doubts, don't forget to drop them down in the comment section and we'll be back soon with more fun and interesting videos.